75 years ago, when the British departed uh, Hindustan, Bharat or India, one would have thought that the amputation of India's limbs on the call of India's Muslims would have settled the issue. But all these decades have gone by and nothing seems to stop. No matter when you pick up the calendar, the Muslim minority of India is always involved in some sort of agitation over the loss of its rights or uh, playing the victimhood card, whether it is the uh, you know, Citizenship Act or any other uh, issue that you find. The Pakistani Muslims, well, they did the slaughter of their fellow Muslims in Bangladesh, created a new country and have still not ended the restiveness by causing chaos in Afghanistan, in Central Asia, wherever you may put, there is always a Pakistani Muslim terrorist involved in some activity. And this doesn't end when it comes to India. But the Muslims who stayed back in India have not given respite to uh, the majority population, nor to the concept of a constitutional federal democracy uh, that uh, has 400 languages, 29 states, six major religions. You rarely ever hear of Zoroastrian trouble or Jains picking up a fight. But no matter what year you pick, there is some Muslim leader out some day creating chaos and anger in among the majority countries, the latest being the campaign for the right to wear a burqa in school uh, at a higher level, pre-university college. The woman that is now being projected across India in the Muslim community as the Sherni, which means lioness of India, and celebrated everywhere across uh, wherever um, the Indian culture dominates or resonates, is a very interesting character. The first time she appeared on television, she was riding a motorcycle or a scooty, as they say, in India. And guess what? She was breaking the law. If you notice the film, she comes and parks a scooty, but she's not wearing a crash helmet, which is a fundamental law that needs to be followed by every Indian who is driving a scooter motorbike on the road. Now, ironically, wearing the uh, crash helmet would have meant that she would have had the law on her side while she was driving the motorbike, but she chose not to. That she comes, parks in a corner, she has no crash helmet on, she has no problem violating uh, the traffic laws, which immediately shows that the objective was not an essential religious, to carry on her essential religious practice. And under that invoke section 25, which is the right of everyone to have freedom. But her intention was to create chaos. So she comes out, walks through this group of uh, uh, idiotic, young men who start raising slogans, wearing orange shawls, and then she raises but her fist and says, Allahu Akbar. For those of you who don't know, Allahu Akbar means God is the greatest, and it is a battle cry raised at every Islamic army's adventure into a foreign state. The slogan was always Allahu Akbar, and today it resonates right in the heart of a country that is probably 80% non-Muslim or Hindu. So here she comes in full provocative form and uh, aided by idiots uh, who are chanting against her. Any amount of chivalry should have told the young men not to uh, bully a single woman, which she wanted. And she succeeded when a woman comes on a scooty and says Allahu Akbar in a burqa and says, I don't respect the laws or regulations of the school, my regulations and laws come from Sharia Islamic law. 
and the Indian Constitution, Section 25, as I hear, but refuses to acknowledge that there are essential beliefs and there are non-essential beliefs, into which has been inserted now the covering of the woman's head. That part of Sharia law is now being demanded by women who received education in a secular country in which no religion is superior to the other, except that no one dare even discuss uh, the issues raised in the Quran or Sharia law. So only yesterday, mentally challenged young man, 41 years old, was uh, stoned to death inside a mosque because they said he had insulted the Quran. And this is not about hijab. This is about telling the Indian government that your constitution, your laws are not superior or first to be observed when it comes to Islamic Sharia law. So this young woman today being hailed as the lioness of Islam has triggered a uh, a wave of thinking that has taken us almost a few hundred years back and this my dear friends is cause for great concern i'll tell you what and this is not simply a discussion for today or happened yesterday i have dozens of books over here on issues uh, like this. this is women's rights the quran and islam i mean there is even a book that is given to women uh, during their uh, just after marriage a gift for Muslim women this is by Malvi Ashik Ilahi Madani uh, you know there are uh, uh, Islamic there are books written on Islamic gender apartheid and uh, you know Muslim women in the Muslim world now if this is just a handful of books written about a religion in which not a single Muslim is willing to follow the example of Prophet Muhammad. You see, Muhammad, a prophet, was proposed to by his boss, Khadija, who was 15 years older than him. And she said to Muhammad that, I love you and I want to marry you. And he said, Alhamdulillah, sure, why not? The first act of Prophet Muhammad is the first one that no Muslim wants to embrace. They don't want to marry a widower, a widow. They don't want to marry somebody 15 years older than them. They, in fact, want a nine-year-old, as Ayatollah Khomeini says. It's justified. And this is the upside-down world of Islam, where the examples that we are told of Prophet Muhammad are rejected by 100% of the population. So let us for once speak the truth and say to our Hindu brothers and sisters, some of us must say that hijab is not essential part of our faith. This has nothing to do, there's not a single line in the Quran that says women should cover their head or their hair. The one line that does say about covering says cover your bosom and the reason for that was that pagan Arab women used to s dance uh, topless to send the uh, uh, men when they were going to war and that was prohibited some of our people turned it into cover your head the word doesn't exist the word hijab means something completely different in the Quran and the word that wear your khimar I have never seen any Muslim woman ever wear the khimar because that's what the Quran says wear the khimar and put it over your breasts but no we simply are using Islam and Sharia law to put down other people otherwise every Friday we would not pray to God Oh God, give us victory over the Qaum al Kafirin. And you know who the Qaum al Kafirin are. They're non Muslims. I hope you can start living with the rest of the world without any ill will in your mind 
by letting your daughters grow up the way they wish to let them fall in love with the men they wish to live with let them get married let religion not be the dividing point because otherwise you will be dividing and subdividing till nothing will be left no good will come out of hating the jew and the hindu because you have hated the shia you hated the ismaili you hated the daudi bora you hated everyone who differs with you and then when no one is left you hate the non muslim stop it brothers and sisters until next time khuda hafiz